The following program is rated TV MALSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. from around the world where we talk about fighters fighting and events welcome to fight world live where you can hear about the latest in the world of combat sports get ready to gear up and square up because we are going live 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 and now broadcasting live this is fight world live Happy Memorial Day weekend, there you go, buddy. everybody. What's going on? Welcome to Fight World Live. What's going on, everybody? Dave Potter alongside my cousin, Sean Murphy. And we're also with Jake, the legend himself, MMA legend, MMA pioneer, champion across the fucking universe, Jake Thunder. <laughs> Hatton, Jake, what's going on, baby? What's up? Glad to be back, boys. Awesome. Very good. And we're also with none other than four time, four, four time. time, four, four time. time, four time world champion, BJJ Black Belt, the man, the myth, the legend, Gabe Rudiger. Gabe, what's going on? <laughs> How you doing? I you uh, I, I thought you pumped up Jake's uh, intro and I was pretty excited about that, but you could have uh, pulled mine down a little bit. Yeah. And we are also Grace with the presence. Oh, we froze. That's it. He froze. Uh, he froze. Yeah, he froze. That's how good the intro was. I guarantee was. you he was hyping it so much Man. that it froze the internet. <laughs> it froze Man. everything. We I can still only imagine. Right. Are we back? Yeah, yeah we're back. Are we back? Yeah. I think we're back. We're I think we're back. See if you can freeze the internet again. There it goes. Sorry about that. But we're also with an MMA pioneer, an MMA legend, a movie star. He was in a movie like Mel Gibson. Somebody like, there? yeah, like a, like, a, like a month or two ago. It is the man, the myth, the legend himself. Shannon, the canon rich. What's going on, brother? Oh my God! After Jake's introduction, I didn't think you could do it any better. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> What's up, brother? I'm always your hype, man. Doing, brother? I'm always your hype, man. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good, man. Happy, uh, you know, it's a it's a great day. It's a it's a great day for America. It's Memorial Day. Remember all those guys that, that lost their lives. So, you know, salute those guys. Salute everybody there. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! So what's been going on with you? So so you you were in a movie with Mel Gibson and, and Jake, hey, not, you were in the set with him, right? Yeah, not not just me. Jake Hatton was there too, man. Jake Jake's out there in Vegas. He's doing a lot of big things, and uh, we got a movie producer named Asif uh, Akbar, and Jake and Asif's doing a lot of big things. So yeah, man, it's uh, going great. But make I'm no big. mistake, Shannon's role is big, and he's a movie star. I'm just a little guy, you know. Just filling in every once in a while. Uh, I oh. I did get I did get to get shot by uh, Mel Kibbs. So that, <laughs> that was kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I, I I saw you post a selfie next to Mel Gibson. I'm like, holy shit! I'm like, Shannon and Jake are doing like big things. Impressive. Like, 
trying, man, trying to trying to live the dream. You know, sometimes it's a nightmare, but yeah, it's a, it's a dream. And, and, and Game knows a lot about that too. He he trained. Uh, do, do you know you guys, like Jake? I mean, uh, do do you guys know that Gabe used to train with Paris Hilton and like a bunch of other Hollywood people? That is cool, man. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather what be training with Paris Hilton than a bunch of that? stinky dudes, man. Gabe, what do you what do you mean by that? I mean, it, it, it's just it, it's yeah. When you live in LA, it's not like that big of a deal. And and on I, the only good part about about working with Paris was like I got to charge a lot of money, and the session was about 10, 15 minutes. And most of the rest of the time, she's like, you know, talking to her assistant or playing with her stupid dog or, you know, I, I outside that, like it was, I, yeah. It, Sounds like I, the I, perfect gig, man. I, it, well, I, okay. I, I can see that. Well, that's not bad. It's, it certainly wasn't bad, but uh, I prefer working with clients that actually want to learn and that have. I that, care. Like, I want to learn. Yeah. They're there. They're there for the, for the skill set. They're not there for pictures. And I mean, like the, even our first session was, was, uh. She's like, oh, it's gonna, you know, it, it's it's uh, there might be paparazzi there, and there was already like everyone with pictures when I showed, it, like, with everyone was already set up and propped ready to go. I was like, uh, okay, I see what this is. It's not yeah. so much you're trying to learn a skill set as much as you're trying to get some publicity. Oh, so so they made it. They made it like a big, like a no, big no, no. You had you had to see this video. Like yeah, people okay. were like planted out in like the forest and like filming Gabe and Paris Hilton. It's like, not. It's not the crazy. forest. Like we went, we went to a, a a massive park here in L.A. Which is, I mean, it, you know, it, it's. She's like, oh yeah, you know, I, I don't want anyone around, but there might be paparazzi because they follow me. But then you go to a park. Everyone's already set up and ready to go. That was every. Yeah. I, I think we worked three times together, and that was all three times. Again, I prefer to work with clients that want to learn. You know what I mean? I, and about, I don't care how famous they are. I don't care how much money they're making. But my concern is if someone comes to me, and they're like, hey, I want to learn. Then my job is to teach them to give them a skill set. I'd rather work with that, but I mean. Don't get me wrong. The money was nice in the time when I needed it. So, yeah. And we're here with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Shan Cambridge. Shan, a bunch of stuff has been in the pipeline. Shan, what what have you been up to, man? Man, I wear a lot of hats. You know that. Um, I'm always sure. busy. I'm always I'm always doing something, man. It's like me. You know, I throw shit against the wall. Eventually, something's gonna stick, man. So, uh, what I got going on right now, man, is uh, I'm trying to uh, be the guy to fight Frank Mir. Uh, Frank Mir has uh, put out a statement saying that he's going to fight, he's going to retire, but he wants to do one more one more fight. Um, it just happens to be in my home state of Arizona, just down the street. Um, so I've talked to the promoter from uh, United Fight League, and I threw my name in the hat. So it's down to me and two other guys, and uh, we're going to see if I get the fight, man. I, I really would love the opportunity to fight Frank Mir. I, I'm a big fan of Frank Mir. Um, I was talking to him a couple weeks ago, him and Quentin Jackson, and uh, – Man, that'd just be that'd just be an honor to get in there and be the be the last guy that Frank fought. Now, I, I, I I've heard about the, the United <clears throat> Fight League a couple times. Were they trying to do some things like where they, not uh, like they, they gave medical and they did all these different things? Uh, and then I had heard about something about that that I didn't hear anything about them at all. So that so is so they were um, a different company. It was called uh, like Fight Freedom Fight Night. And then what happened was they went from Freedom Fight Night as their it's going to be their feeder league to uh, United wow. Fight League. So the UFL has only had wow. two shows. This is going to be their third one coming up. But um, they're uh, yeah, they're giving uh, free, they're giving medical insurance to all their fighters. Uh, when they sign a fighter, they get they get medical insurance uh, that covers them for the year. Um, yeah, the they're year. doing some big, wow. yeah, they're doing, doing some big things, man. The, some other That's stuff huge. that you know other other promotions would never even consider. So uh, Harrison Rogers, the guy that runs a ufl man he's such a good dude man he's a he's a, he's a great dude man that's all i can say for him you know and, I, and and promoters are promoters you know usually they're assholes and the you know dirt bags but this guy seems like a uh a, a guy who really you know caters to the fighter we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. see right proofs in the pudding at, at the end you know yeah yeah you know, of course well, hopefully you know we've all been around the block we're all big boys and goddamn shannon you and i well christ i mean that's how gabe and i met was getting fucked on that promotion, you know. Yeah. And you were there. We were, we were all there. I mean, it's it always starts off good until it doesn't. Yeah, right. it's, they're, they're, <laughs> now I the, I think there's always there, there's like this 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 um either the promoters that that promise everything, and I think they have good intentions initially, and then they realize that like 
okay, the, the promotion is not going to make the money that they need, and then then all their 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 promises fall through. Um, and they I, run I, I, my door, and they escape yeah. all you guys. <laughs> I mean that that's happened many times. I I, uh, I, I signed to fight a, a promoter down here, and the 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 checks were too good to be true. So I'm the only one that asked for a cashier's check for payment. And I was the only one that got paid out of everyone on that on the card. And the rest uh, of the how many people were on that card? Well, because I, mean, I talked to, uh, I mean, I mean, well, at least twelve. I mean, so the thing is, I got to talk to. They had one card before with Vladi Matashenko and a bunch of other guys. But I called up Vladi and asked him about the promoter, and he goes, "Make sure that you that you insure your money, so that I made that in my contract." And that's the only thing that saved me from getting stiff like everybody else. Wow, fair enough, fair enough. Good for you. Good. But um, uh, so uh, so my question with with Shen and and I, I saw the announcement and as a friend I love you more than anything Shen like we we were texting today like by the way so I was in Arizona I hung out with Shen in the VIP in the lounge like watching Anderson Silva fighting Jake Paul I uh, we went to uh, Anderson Silva's after party I got fucking drugged in my drink what like, I swear to God like it yeah. happened. And I, I was picking Wait. up my brains out, and I end up in a hospital. And like, you got, I, I, drunk in your, you got, you, oh, you got, you got uh, roofied, or you got, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, they pour some drink, like some liquid stuff in my shot. Oh, like, right. that's called GHB. I have no idea, yeah. but nevertheless, it's called, it's like, called that, David. That, was that guy right there knows about David. <laughs> Look at yeah. that face. It's yeah. But and ne and ne and nevertheless, Shen, I love you more than anything. <laughs> like once again, you're one of my idols growing up, just like Gabe and just like Jake. But like fighting Frank Muir, like uh, once again, just like you, he's a BJJ black belt. He's a, a legend, just like you. He's been through the gambit, just like you. Like, what's your confidence fighting somebody that as at he's just as legendary as you like what, what's your confidence heading to that fight my my confidence is sky high because you know it's not the frank mirror of his uh his prime man this is frank mirror in his retirement fight this is frank mirror with you know who's got all the aches and pains and uh he's not this he's not the same frank mirrors when he was beating brock lesnar this is a yeah but, an but older Chad, frank mirror you know this is still this is still the frank <clears throat> mirror that broke Tim Sylvia's arm. He's yeah. still as dangerous as he was, and you're still as dangerous as you ever were. Like what? Yeah. Like what's what's the elements that you see in Frank Mir's game that you think you can beat? Like again, black belt versus black belt. What what do you think that you have the advantage on? Um, obviously, I'm a smaller heavyweight, so therefore he's going to have to catch me. I'll be faster. Uh, he may be a little bigger than me, and probably be a little bit stronger, but. Hey man, it's one I really want to do. You know, if I can if I can sign this contract and get it done, I I'd love to go out as well. You know, on on, on a you know a win over Frank Mir would just be that would just solidify my uh, my career for for hundred percent. You know, I would love it, man. Now let me ask I you. Really we we had you before on the show a couple of times, Shannon, and we had talked about that uh, before when you in your in uh, in your earlier days you would you would uh, take fights and you even said yourself that like you would just stop because. You knew you could fight again the next day, which is, I mean, as far as business is concerned, that makes sense. 100%. Like, you know what I mean? Ensuring you're not hurt, getting in there, putting in your work in. And if it was going the wrong way, better to just, you know, call it a day because you know you're doing this for a business, right? Which is mm -hmm. actually very, very smart. A lot of people didn't know that in your career. But now this being uh, a fight with Frank Mir, would you put your all into it? Like, 100 percent You know, I, I'd go in there and, and die on the store, man. It, this, this is a fight that, you know, if – if uh, you know, if I got to get knocked out, if I, something's got to break, something's got to break. You know, I'm, yeah. I, there's no way I'm tapping in this fight unless I had to just absolutely had to. Um, you know, hopefully I'm knocking Frank out, and Frank would, uh, you know, and I don't want to sit here and talk any kind of trash against Frank because I I really look up to him and I really respect what he's done in MMA. But um, gotta uh, sell the fight though, he, bro. He, but, but but you do gotta yeah, sell the fight. But but. You know, no, no offense to uh, Frank Mir. He has got something called big man's jujitsu. Okay. I am 230 pounds coming from a guy who was 155. So, I mean, I've, I, I literally have a, a MMA belt at 155, 170, 85, 205, and heavyweight. I have jujitsu from a small man. My, my jujitsu is slick, man. I, I got some of the best ankle locks in the world, best yeah. arm bars, best chokes. For, for, I mean, I won worlds twice. I mean, I'm a legitimate black belt. Fourth degree black belt on Carlos Machado. Uh, my coach 
my, my jujitsu is my my jujitsu is solid. You know, ask Jake. Jake Jake's been with me on the mat. He he knows. I, but but Frank has big man jujitsu, so I think it's gonna be small man jujitsu versus big man jujitsu. We, we just have to see how it goes. So so you yeah, want to keep it on the feet? Hundred oh, percent. I want to keep it on the feet. I, I'm uh, you know a lot faster than him. Uh, you know, I'd stick and move and just get him tired, so he'd have to chase me. You know, it's the the UFL as a cage as big as the UFC, so it's a massive cage. Um, there's a ton of room. Stick and move would be the game plan. He'd have to catch me, um, and that 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 definitely would keep it on the feet as far as I could. I mean, I hit hard. He hits hard. Uh, you know, I, I I love it, man. It'd be. I got the bare knuckle boxing back in back in me. I, I love to I love to I love to swing, man. I love to hit. So if that were the case, yeah, keeping it on the feet would be the the game plan. You know what's so fascinating though, like when you have like two black belts, and I I, I want to ask Gabe this because once again, I'm a white belt for life. But like you have one black belt versus another black belt, and it's two masters of their craft, and it's like two people. That know every single little element, devil in the details. They know fucking everything. There's like yeah. there's intricacies to the game, like of Jisu, like that, like me or my cousin or fucking anybody wouldn't grasp. Like Gabe, how do you approach a fight between one black belt versus another? Like especially with two masters of the craft, well, like yourself and well, I mean, like uh, Chan Rich. There's a couple different ways of going about it. Like if you know this guy is a gangster on the ground and you have better standing than him, I, you, you don't want to go to the ground with him. Like yeah, so let's say, for instance, we're both black belts, but this guy is a 10 time world champion and has submitted everybody. Now, will I be able to roll will I be able to, to hang with him on the ground? Yeah. But why would I even give him an opportunity to get into that space right now? Right. Understanding that if we get to that space, I need to know what, what position is going to be the least operative for him uh optimum for for him to, to move forward but i honestly my, my take is like when, when i uh when i fought uh uh like a, a vonderbraga who was a you know a, a six-time world champion he was a third degree black belt when i was a brown belt i wasn't going to the ground unless i knew for sure that i was a gonna be on top or or b was gonna have a submission set before i went for it i was gonna stay on the feet yeah it's great thing what do you jake, think jake what do you think well, striking always changes things up too, right? You can have the best, best jiu-jitsu guy in the world. Every time you hit him, it changes things. Your positioning is completely different in MMA than jiu-jitsu, right? We, we know that. So, you know, it, 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 a lot of variables there, but I agree with what everybody else says. You know what I mean? Don't fight somebody else's strength. But if yeah. you are going to go to the ground, you know, you, you drop a couple nice slicing elbows or, you know, rock them with a couple good shots some ground and pound usually slows their hips down a little bit. So that, that can change things up a little as well. So yeah. the, good thing, the good thing about being a, a, a grappling specialist versus a grappling specialist, you're not going to see much that you don't already know. So yeah. if you get into those realms and, and like Jake said, you start striking, that's going to change the whole dynamic. You might have a guy who is so slick and so moving, but, but if you at Jiu Jitsu black belt understands fundamental movement, and if can then you can add strikes on top of that, you're gonna be you're gonna be much better up way ahead on that alone. And by the way, uh, the nerd fact of the week What's that? brought to you by Nerd Focus, one of the greatest energy drinks alive. Who was the very first? And I'll, I'll give all three of you guys the trivia question: Who is the very first female who is supposed to fight in the UFC? Gina Carano. Gina Carano. No. Becky nope. Levi. Nope. Erica Montoya. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I UFC, that. I UFC Sun that. Impact, uh, it came out in 2004. It was a video game. And Erica Montoya came out on that video game. She was the very first female character. So, um, UFC came out on Sega Dreamcast, that, that video game, and PlayStation and Game Boy. But uh, Sun Impact came out from an independent distributor, and they wanted to push Erica Montoya. Erica Montoya was supposed to be the very first female to fight in the UFC. But Erica, and that is the Nerd Fact of the Week brought to you by our good folks at Nerd Focus, one of our good sponsors. And we, we shout out to them who cares about the community and cares about sponsoring the show. So, did, did, do you know? Okay, so back at your Nerd Fact, did Erica have any MMA fights? 
No. I know from the jiu-jitsu scene here in California. I mean, yeah. actually, I know quite a bit. I know all of, like even like uh, personal stuff about that. Uh, but um, she has MMA fights. No, I, it's, they they push her heavily, but they wow. it, she did not have any MMA fights. No, not nothing hmm. notable. Okay, all right. That crazy. Means, I was thinking just a hub of crazy information, man. Yeah, crazy information. <laughs> Whoa, I know Gabe's social security number, his favorite ice cream flavor. <laughs> what I what I love most about like Gabe, like uh, yeah, I, I and Shen as well. Like, just saying. <laughs> If, if you use enough. identity stuff, dummy, you wouldn't get very much. So you can, you can <laughs> use that social all you want. So Gabe, uh, I mean, not Gabe, but um, Shen, any new movie, like besides the fact of fighting uh, Frank Muir, any other things in the pipeline, <clears throat> like ankles that are coming up or? Man, next month, uh, I was supposed to be doing a Western out here in uh, Arizona and be playing a Marshall. Um and then uh, also have a movie out that's coming out. It's called Out of the Shadows. It's a, uh, it's about a uh, high school football player. It's a, uh, it's kind of like The Blind Side, a lot like The Blind Side. You know, a heart well, heart heartfelt uh, movie. And I'll be playing a football coach. Um, I was gonna say, if you were one of the players, that would have been impressive. Yeah, yeah, that would. <laughs> man, I, I, this 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 gray couldn't couldn't get me. Oh, sorry. All the tattoos yeah. in the gray. Yeah, I'm yeah. a 17-year-old. Look at me. Yeah. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I just got my license. No, oh, I... nah. nah, I'll be playing the high school football coach. Oh. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. any of us can pull off a high school player anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, gentlemen, are you guys ready to play our favorite game ever? And by the way, everyone can play at home. Five topics. Are you guys ready to play? I, I got one thing to say. Yes, sir. Before, before that, real quick. Yes, um, sir. I, dude, I've been super busy, and I did not mean to uh, miss my brother's birthday. Jake, I wanted to say belated happy birthday to you. I, I'm so sorry I didn't call you on your birthday. Um, please forgive me. We'll make it up next time I see you in Vegas. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. I, I, I did it on, on Facebook. I saw it, man. Thank you but so much. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, all the opportunities I got with the, like the UFC or anything like that was from this guy being my big brother and looking out for me and everything like that. Like, all my hard work came into fruition, not because of my hard work, because of Jake's hard work. So Jake's, Jake's been looked out for me through and through, made me realize my dream. Jake, you are a legend. You are the man, and you are the big brother of all big brothers, and I love you more than anything, and happy birthday, Jake. Love you, boys. Appreciate you. Enough about me. Let's get back to Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up. Are you guys ready for five topics? Let's go. Let's go. All right, boys and girls, children of all ages, my bros and hoes in all different area codes, let's play. Five times. My favorite game ever, and we get to pick the brain of the guests. Obviously, Shan the Cam Rich knows better then most of us, not obviously Jake and Gabe, yep. who've been through the process, but nevertheless, we get to share five topics with three legends, Jake, Gabe, and of course, Shan Cam Rich. And we're going to go to topic number one. Jake, are you ready? Let's go. Gabe, four-time world champion. Gabe, are you ready? Proceed. And Shan Cam Rich. 20 million time world champion. I was going to say, he's got one more <laughs> <than I do. laughs> We're up to 20 million. <laughs> Let's do Jay it. Jay Rich, are you ready? Let's do it. All right, topic number one. Let's go. All right, so the big topic that everybody's talking about is Francis going to the PFL. So I'm going to start off with Jake. Jake, what do you feel about Francis going to the PFL, obviously there was a lot of talk back and forth, everything like that. What do you feel about Francis going to the PFL? Well, let's look at two sides of this deal, right? And let's look Fair at enough. it from a fighter side and a promoter side. And we all know fighters can be a pain in the ass and, and ask a lot. So, so the deal for Francis, phenomenal, you know, absolutely phenomenal. The deal for PFL, nobody has yet been able to explain. I've got a lot of good inside on this and contractually and this deal made zero sense to me however i'm gonna say this about the pfl 
everything they do makes zero sense to me. It's it's <laughs> those guys hemorrhage money. They 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 keep raising capital, and I don't know who the fuck keeps putting money into a lost leader. So so I, I believe they're they're listen, and I want them to do well, and I want other organizations to do well. I just can't, you know. Every time a PFL is on, tell me five fighters in the PFL. Uh, you know, I'll wait. You know what I mean? It's it's really yeah. tough. It's really tough to do. So for Francis, again, amazing deal. But a they paid him twenty million. B, they've got to pay another fighter two million every time they fight him, which is which is insane. So I mean, they're you're talking you're talking an exorbitant amount of money already. C, he hasn't fought for a long time, so he's lost some steam. Fury's not going to fight. Joshua's not going to fight. He might fight might fight uh, Deontay, which. I mean, look, people would watch it, but are you going to recoup your money on a pay-per-view? I fucking doubt it. Yeah. I really doubt it. So I think PFL was was riding the wave looking at, 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 hey, you know, how do we take this guy and build it up? And and everybody's looking at that $5, million, $5 billion evaluation, and they just want a little market share of that. So everybody's looking at how they can build it up. Francis isn't even going to fight MMA till 2024, and he's going to wow. box first. And PFL's never thrown – a boxing match on they have no idea how to work with boxing promoters and be the first pay-per-view that pfl did sold 8500 pay-per-views so you're gonna have to sell uh, it just the whole deal on so PFL side made zero sense to me it still makes zero sense to me but good for francis for getting a fat big paycheck but i i, I hope this doesn't blow up in everybody's face because it sure seems like it might Fair enough. Gabe, what do you think? I mean, Jake uh, said pretty much everything that, that he said. He pretty much summed it up. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more. Is, is, uh, um, and I'm in agreement in a lot of ways. Um, I think when the deal was, was projected, I, uh, Jake seems to have more details than I do, but it seemed like a very, very th- – and again, I am all for fighters getting what they deserve and maybe a little bit more. But the PFL, it's uh, it's never been an organization that's that's you know I that, that it's never considered a number two. They, I, I've heard Bellator and one being thrown around as the 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 two three spot, which puts the PFL at four. Um, I I don't know if they're just trying to generate enough to get to two or what the the, the game plan is for them. But I, I I hope for success for everybody. I, I look at the more opportunities that we have for fighters, the better off they are. And a deal like that is monumental. And one thing I give I give 100% credit to Francis, Francis for is, as Jake said, he's getting $20 million, but he's guaranteeing that whoever he's fighting is getting paid $2 million. That's some badass shit right there. Genuinely. You can't even – I can't even so tell you how many fight, fighters, fighters they've had. They've brought in that, like, in, in like these these upkeeping uh, – they, they had the marquee guy, and they put him against <clears> this guy that they give, like, five grand to. They give this guy 200 grand. They give this guy five – and somehow that's supposed to make it. But France is like, no, take care of my pro- opponent as well. So, look, no matter who it is, that guy, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping for success for everybody, but uh, I, uh, I, I'm skeptical. Fair enough. Shannon Cambridge, what do you think? Uh, just one word, man. It's just absolutely insane. That's It's insane. Really? Uh, the, PL, the PFL, they keep and doing can that. You, they, will uh, expand they will not be around long. Uh, Francis again, like uh, like uh, Gabe said and Jake said, uh, good for him. Uh, he's gonna get you know super amount of money. But uh, what if they only pay him one time? What if uh, what if it's not where they have enough to pay him two and three and four and five times? What if uh, what if they say, oh guys, <laughs> we messed up? Yeah, well, I, insane. Just remember when if he fights twice, Shan, that's four million dollars just to some fucking opponent. Uh, un- understandably insane. It's, 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 I mean, hey, exactly. We all want that. We all want to be the guy fighting Francis, I, right? I want to do it hundred percent, but as a promotion, you're looking at him like you're just bleeding money. You're just right, giving right. away too much money. Saying so, that, Shane, I think it's insane. Saying, even saying that, they and Jake said this earlier. They have made deal after deal after deal that I'm like shaking my head like wait what like yeah and they keep doing it so there's yeah. got to be something behind the scenes that we're not seeing that we don't know that they have some some rich guy behind them someone or something. Is, yeah, i have no idea man it's ridiculous I, yeah man. I, I don't know maybe maybe uh the, the crown prince of, of uh, saudi it, arabia is 
Yeah, and if you're just you're, hemorrhage yeah. money just for the sake of hemorrhaging, money. I was really, I was really thinking that Gabe. To be honest, I was thinking that's where the money was coming from. Um, it's, it's somebody's it's hobby, maybe. Who knows? It's yeah, mostly, sure, why not? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it's mostly just from venture capitalist companies, but they're 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 drinking the Kool Aid, seeing the evaluation of the UFC for for five billion dollars, and they're thinking if they hold on, if they keep pumping money into this thing, hundreds of millions of dollars. And they're trying to raise 278 million additional dollars to do this international expansion of this. Like nobody even knows who you guys are. Like, you know, walk before you, you, you know, you try to sprint. Yeah. And I, I want to preface this by like, I, I think every, every fighter should get paid billions and billions of dollars. I think like, once again, like, and, and I'm talking to three guys, by the way, Jake and Gabe and Rich, Shandikan, Rich, they built the sports on their fucking backs and they made it to where it is today. They're fucking three pioneers that we're on the show with. And you guys are welcome, by the way, that they're on here. But like they built this sport. I have VHS tapes tapes at my mother's house. Holy shit. Do. They I guess I do. You and do. they built this sport to what it is today. Jake, Gabe, and and Shan is a big reason why this sport is why, you know, it's under the confines of publicly traded companies. Why is it under the confines of, like, all these, like, big, like, conglomerates? But, like, nevertheless, with the PFL, my biggest problem with MMA is I, I think every fighter should get paid billions and billions of dollars. But it's not a sustainable business model. Yeah, That's the problem with it. Where it's not like the NBA or NFL or anything like that. They're trying to build it up to like that. Where, like, they're having games or they're having fights every single week where people are getting paid and people are coming on the platform, everything like that. But it's not nearly as profitable as an NFL or a NBA. Like that, that's the only thing. Like, and I think like MMA fighters should get paid billions of dollars, but it's not a sustainable business model, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Topic number two. <laughs> number two. <laughs> Okay, all right, yeah, all right, I'm going number two. Wait, you guys yeah, are tapping two. out? Like, I, I, are you guys closed out with me? I mean, is there anything else to be said? I think, uh, you know, I, well, I, I would say you. I would say PFL is number two. I mean, uh, PFL is number four or five or six. I would say one FC is number two. I really I, like one FC, yeah. dude. One FC it, just blew my mind this last event they had, dude. Well, I, they're, I, they're, yeah. just as, their their prime deal is a big deal that people are not talking yeah. about. Right. One, uh, and that's why I said it's it's between Bellator and one. I, I think that Bellator's back, I, back I think forth. Bellator's even below uh one FC. I mean their their production this last event was just mind boggling. It, 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 it was just as good or better than the UFC. But but well, I but I am gonna say this one thing. The only two companies that make money, not 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 print money and go for investors, is UFC and Bellator. Scott Coker has always had strike force was always prof. They every fucking promotion I've ever seen from affliction to down the line, they lose money. They they hemorrhage money. One is hemorrhaging money. Have you seen their? I mean, they they are paying out an absorbent amount of yeah. money. So they they're going to need to make. They are going to need to make billions of dollars to stay in. But again, great promotions, great everything. But you know, let's see their longevity because you keep pumping out that type of money. You yeah. Know, it, in going off of what Jake is saying, these are so like, for instance, the Affliction promotion had amazing cards. There have been so amazing. many promotions that have made the dump, but keeping themselves alive is a whole different thing because right. capital in versus capital out is a very big deal. And Coker just keeps his head down and yeah. just keeps pumping along, steady, yeah. making money, you know? Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Are you gentlemen ready for topic number two? Are you guys ready? Yo, look at those right. guns. Holy shit. Potter's got some good Potter, goddamn. I, can't wait, I, baby. I said that to him that uh, when I saw him two days ago. I'm like, what's happening here, David? <laughs> like, what is your what is an open carry what state? Is this now? Him and I'm Paris game ready for country to the MMA and fitness, baby. I'm game did, ready. Did you hear that? David, open how long has New Jersey been an open carry state? <laughs> not very long. <laughs> At all. If not any, no, it's never been. All right, Gabe. Are you ready for topic number two? All right, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's go to topic number two. 
All right, the Conor McGregor documentary. All right, Jake, did you watch it? And what did you think about the Conor McGregor documentary? I did. Incredibly well done, you know. Um, super interesting. I mean, I think they painted him in a little better light because, you know, he's a little bit of a train wreck right now. But super interesting. I mean, talk about a guy that, that changed the sport. I mean, all fighters shouldn't be saying shit about him because you want to talk about raising fighters pay. That boy did it because he was making over 20 million a fight. You know, he, he's that's the, that's the, that's the real gangster right there. But it really interesting documentary, you know, a lot of trials and tribulations. I mean, they showed a lot of shitty things. So but and and he's the only guy that's kind of partnered with Dana when Dana went back in that dressing room after he lost. You know, and Khabib jumped over. Dana's like, oh, Khabib jumped over. Connor's like, I don't give a fuck. I just lost the fight. And, I mean, he just, you know, nobody really talks to Dana that way, which was kind of interesting. But, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was well done. Fair enough. Gabe, what do you think? I didn't see it. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Gabe, I, <knew> it. <laughs> I did watch Chimp Empire, though. Oh, that you was good. Watch a real yeah, good like documentary. That. Watch Chimp Empire on Netflix. That, yeah, that is fucking good. great. Agreed. That shit was amazing, son. I'm going to uh, watch that tonight, actually, because I needed something. It's really good. <sighs> like, genuinely, as far as documentaries go, throw that, that Connor uh, documentary into the fucking toilet. <laughs> get yourself on some Chimp Empire. Yeah, Trust get on the Chimp Empire. All right. Uh, Dave, how is going to be the worst individual ever? <laughs> I know. I, listen, every time I turn on Netflix, it always is the first thing. It... Netflix knows that I want that like that I'm an MMA guy because immediately that's the first thing it, it tries to pump at me, which is the reason why I say, fuck, I will not watch that shit. I'm going to go to Chimp Empire. I'm going to go to anything but that. I, I, I'm I sure at some point I will watch it, but I don't care about Conor. MMA McGregor's legend, life. Gabe. You're an MMA <laughs> legend. I don't know about that, but uh, I mean, listen, I, I Jake is correct in the respect that uh, Conor has. I mean, he's he's become uh, uh, more of an iconic uh, member of the MMA world, uh, but I don't. I don't care about his life. I don't care about what he's doing. And I, I kind of suspected that it would be painted in to show him as as uh, something that he. I personally think he is. Now, I don't get me wrong. I think that that you know he there's there's certain parts of him which are which are you know he's come back and he fought and he's gone through whatever. But I don't know. I I, I think uh, uh, overall, I one just don't like the guy uh personality wise uh i mean there's no denying he's he's got skill uh and there's no denying he knows how to sell a fight but i don't you know if we're gonna do a documentary make it real show him you know sm you know yeah, doing had, lines of, uh, uh, joke off of hookers asses and and hitting old men in the face and just being a genuine shit bag because he's got money and fair, fame. Enough. fair enough okay shannon cam rich what do you think uh, I think Conor McGregor inside the cage and inside MMA is uh, phenomenal. He's the, he's really done some uh, outstanding uh, stuff. But as a person, yeah, he's a shitbag. Uh, he, you know, like like Gabe just said, you know, he beats up old people. He when he when he threw the uh, uh, what was it a dolly or whatever into the bus? Yeah, the and dolly. Shattered. And it, and it got Rose, yeah, Rose bus, Namajuda, yeah. it, it, got, it got Rose in the eye. And, um, you know, they didn't really touch base too so much. Says, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, I, I was a big, I hate Conor McGregor guy, um, but I couldn't hate him for too much, too long because he always, fuck man, the guy backed it up in the cage and he, he, he did some great stuff. I mean, he, he really is a, a phenomenal athlete. Um, but as a person, yeah, I, I mean, I watched the documentary. It was very well done. Um, but, uh, documentaries can be spun. So, I mean, you got to take it for a grain of salt. You got to, you got to take yeah. it for what it was. Hey, that's that's a great point. Also, it, it, everything can be forgiven and validated when you're winning, and when you start losing, then you just you just truly look like a shit bag, you know? Because mm -hmm. then you're just running your mouth, running your mouth. There's nothing backing up. You're not knocking well, people out. The the other well, part, go, going back to what Shannon was saying, is you can you can manipulate a documentary and yeah. push it. And I have no doubt that that Connor wanted. To, to see it and watch the editing and make sure that he's put into the best light possible. So is it a documentary or is it more of a fluff piece for Connor? It seems right. like a fluff piece a little bit. One thing they, they didn't put into it though, that he wanted to was like his business ventures. He wanted to market that a little bit more, but Netflix was kind of like, nah, we're not going to do this. Yeah. We're going to keep it strictly to MMA. 
But it seemed like a fluff piece a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It, 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 it did. It was not a fluff piece. And I guarantee you, it was not signed up to be. It, it was not signed up to be a fluff piece. And by the way, I want to uh, preface this with it. Like, I, I grew up a Sakuraba fan yeah. who saw the Tokyo Dome just being his entertaining self. He made money for pride just being his entertaining self. Like, I am not, I, I was never a fan of Conor McGregor, but like a humanized Conor McGregor. Yeah. Like, like you know, like a human being, like a guy that went through the same trials and tribulations as uh, Shan Cannon Rich or a uh, Gabe Wood or a Jake Wood. Yeah. Like okay. it, didn't didn't you guys like humanize with Conor McGregor like through that documentary or? I, I thought it was I thought it was well done. I, I think they yeah. they put a lot of shitty things that he did in there and the mistakes. So I thought they did a good job of not just completely glamorizing him. And you know, there there was some. There was some not so flattering things in there for him. In, in oh, yeah, case. I didn't watch it, so I, I'm going off of just uh, you know. Of course, you didn't because you don't give a shit. <laughs> I, I'm sure you know. It's like with everything else. Um, I'll probably watch it like five years after everyone else watched it. Like uh, I just watched Breaking Bad. Have you heard of that series? It's yeah, I did. I did. It was pretty good. Oh, sure. Check it never, out. I never watched it. <laughs> Bullshit, Shan. Bullshit. Never. Never watched it. <laughs> it's from somebody from Arizona too. Never watched it. Bullshit. I'm a yellow. I'm a Yellowstone guy, man. I I, I like. I it. love it. I, I love that show. I heard it's good. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Dude. It's well, really good. Yeah, the first couple of seasons. Ripping that show's goaded. Yeah. All right. Fair enough, guys. Are you guys ready for topic number three? Jen Cam Rich, are you ready, sir? Number three. All right. Let's yes. fucking go. Jen Cam Rich said so. So we're gonna do it. Let's go to topic number three. Clean hands, feet, number feet, three. All right. So exciting fights that you're looking forward to. Uh, Jake Thunderhatton, obviously a gentleman who's won title belts across the world, and the man himself, Jake. What fights are you excited for? Oh, Justin Gaethje versus Dustin Poirier. Take my fucking money. Take all my money for that. Yeah. Two, two, yeah. Gabe, you're right, Gabe. It's the second time around. They're both different fighters. There, there's so many. I forget which fight card's coming up, but it is absolutely stacked of of incredible matchups. But I, I think that's the one that I'm that I'm most intrigued because again, they're both different fighters. And what I like about Gaethje now is he he's a little more controlled, you know, a little more controlled brawling. And man, that's a that's a scary dude. Fair enough. Fair enough. Gabe, what do you think? Um, you know what? Uh, Jake brought that. F I, I actually, that was not a fight I was thinking of. But, yeah, I got to add that to uh, – that is definitely a fight that I have an interest in. But the fight that uh, I'm really interested in right now is uh, the Benil Darush versus Hell Charles yeah. Oliveira. Hell yeah. Um, that fight was supposed to happen a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that was, that's going to yeah. be at uh, Madison Square Garden, right? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think that's what you mean. Um, I wish it was a five-round fight. I think that fight would, uh, could realistically go five rounds. Um, but for me, I, I, I've known Benil before he was in the UFC, uh, and uh, Charles Oliveira's, you know, was the champion. So uh, that fight for me has a lot of interest. Yeah, and they're both exceptional like round guys. And uh, Benil's got more of a controlled stand-up portion, whereas whereas Charles is like, let's fucking go, let's throw. And that for me is fun. But the Gagey Gagey uh, 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 Poirier too. I mean, it can't be. A, I mean, it can be. It can be. Don't get me wrong. But I think it's going to be like one of those those Ward Gotti type of moments where they're going to go at it, and it's a it's a main event, correct? Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be five rounds, and I I think it could go. I think it realistically. Well, I don't know. Poi, the one thing is, is Poye has got submission where Gaethje doesn't. That's true. Fair enough, Mister Rich. Fights that you're looking forward to. I'm looking forward to this female fight that's getting ready to come up. Aldana's getting ready to fight the girl from Mexico. Um, the Mexican yeah. girls are on a tear they are yeah. they're, they're they're super tough and everybody's sleeping on them my buddy is actually training them and um i i i i think these girls are are not to be slept on these these, these mexican girls are tough fuck yeah versus nunez correct yeah yeah, yeah nunez yeah, aldana nunez. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 fuck yeah what about All you right. david uh -uh, um, you don't get out of this yeah, oh, I'm sorry. You know, um, what, the fuck? what about that Volkanovski uh, Yair fight coming up? Oh, Pretty come exciting. on. Pretty, Pretty, hard hard to go wrong with that one. Pretty fucking exciting. Yeah. 
That, 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 that you're a fight? She like hey, come hey, on, throw all yeah. my money at that. Like Vogue, Vogue always puts on a good show though. That's why. Like yeah. Yeah. one yeah. possible fight, yeah. ones that's not quite booked yet, but goddamn, I hope it happens. Is Hazmat Shemayov versus Col was that yep. Yeah. What Colby is it Kobe or Kamaru? No, Kamaru. It's Kamaru, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd heard about that. Yeah, that is yeah, that, that that's, might that's, actually be very and shit, if we're gonna, right, Jake, Jake, if we're gonna go with fights that, that aren't booked yet, then shit, let's go with Frank Mir, Shannon Rich. That's yeah. 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 right, right there, yeah. Well, let's Shannon, Rich. Right. Let's yeah. go, oh. baby. Yeah, Kamara yeah. Wants yeah. Wants yeah. Kamara wants the fight in and 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 Hazma, he can't drop the 70, and Dana won't do a catch weight because it doesn't make any sense. So the pro yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll see, but I, I hope that fight happens. Too. You, know, you know what my answer is? I'm looking forward to Frank Mir right. drawing a set and fighting against my boy, Shen, the Cannon Rich. Let's fucking go, baby. Let's go. And Jake is laughing. And you, you, you got it. You I, I got it. Yeah, yeah. That was a hype. That's hype right there. <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah. He was a hype what? man. I'm with you, brother. David would just what? follow you around, hyping you up left and right. What's in David's drink? I can't see. David's the flavor, flavor of the, of the show. That guy is the hype. Man. Yeah, he's got I something. Drink a White Claw, which is the Damn equivalent right is. of. I, I drink White Claws to sober up, by yeah. the way. So, right. I'm, I'm, I'm not drunk. I'm rather nerd energy drink for vodka, vodka, vodka <laughs> nerd energy drinks, you know. Are you guys ready for topic number four? Number four. All day. Fair enough. Let's go. All right, guys, boys and girls, children of all ages, are you ready for topic number four? Jake, are you ready? Gabe, are you ready? Mm, I believe so. It's Fair a good enough. one. And Shannon Cam Rich, the legend himself, are you ready? I'm always ready, brother. Fair enough, sir. Let's go to topic number four. Love question four. <laughs> So this is a question that I asked Dana White personally, but UFC merging with the WWE. And Jake, what is your opinions and what's your thoughts about UFC merging with the WWE? Well, number one, people need to get out of their minds that it's going to turn into fucking wrestling. They're two separate entities, two completely separate, you know, different companies. Yeah, yeah, you, you see it. Um, you know, and we, and, you know, UFC is always looking to expand their viewer base, right? So that's why they brought Brock Lesnar in to get that crossover crowd and start merging that crowd together. And it kind of used to be taboo, uh, you know, years ago, if you said you were a wrestling fan. Now, now it's really over the last probably five years and Daniel Cormier and everybody's at WrestleMania. It's really merged into, and the truth is, is MMA truly, it, it's entertainment. You know, right. at the end of the day, it's entertainment. So the, the merge is great, you know, and maybe they can do some different promotional crossovers, you know, bring some guys over or bring, you know, more UFC guys over there to do the theatrics. But I think that opens up a lot of doors. But again, two separate companies, UFC is not turning into fucking wrestle, you know, wrestling, but some, I, I think it'll create some neat opportunities for some and, and probably grow full sports yeah, what do you your basis. What's Fair that? enough. Gabe, what do you think? Um, well, I mean, Endeavor bought WWE, so they're owned and acquisitioned to the same company. But uh, as as uh, Jake had said, um, my understanding is that they're going to be separate entities. Um, but, I mean, look, when you're owned by an entertainment conglomerate like Endeavor, uh, that opens up doors. And the fact that they're owned by WWE, you, there could be some crossovers. Um and I'll be honest, uh, you, uh, MMA as a whole has kind of turned a little bit uh, more theatrical. You know, uh, I can't even tell you how many guys just like run their mouths, express it to run their mouths, not because they're, you know, there's any, they're just trying. And they'll even say, look, I'm just trying to sell the fight. Look, look, look when, when, when Habib was, was smashing uh, Connor, remember Connor's just saying, it's just business, it's just business. Yeah. Or, uh, and, 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 you know, there's going to be the that the entertainment aspect of it because it is there is entertainment like and we also recognize that the UFC has followed the WWE model where it's not about the stars as much as it is about the organization itself, right? Um, right and they've right. been doing that before there was any when they were Zufa, 
you yeah. know, so when, when they yeah. weren't even owned by Endeavor. Um, but I think the more opportunities that they have for the fighters, the better. And I mean, you know, entertainment's entertainment. Uh, I just hope that I really hope that it doesn't turn into something like, a, uh, and don't get this wrong, but like a pancreas where like there are now worked fights and there are elements of, you know, like theatrics are theatrics. For me, I love the fighting. That's what I'm in it for. I, I've always appreciated the guy that goes in there and puts it on, puts it on the line. He he's not put out, putting on a show as much as like, look, uh, we're going to fight, right? And you're going to prepare, I'm going to prepare, and we're going to collide in the center of that cage. And what happens, happens, right? That's more of what I like. But, uh, you know, I th- there's nothing wrong with, uh, it, it, you know, it being acquired by the same company. Fair enough. Jen Camrich, the legend himself. What do you think? Uh, UFC merging okay. with a WWE. I think it's good, man. I think, like Jake said, you're going to get more eyeballs on this. You're going to have the WWE fans probably looking into the UFC. Maybe they haven't watched the UFC, but now they're – going to see it or maybe some ufc fans are now maybe going to tune into a wwe match uh, i mean i think it's good for both companies um i also do think that, that there could be a thing when uh, a fighter is maybe getting to the end of his career um they throw him into the wwe and and you know you had like a ken shamrock and the dan severin guys uh oh, going into the and you got you Severin. got ronda rousey who is now in the wwe so you know they've done their their stint in real fighting and then you know hey let's 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 c- c- carry their brand over into the wwe and uh still give them a, an outlet and uh, let the fans watch them uh do some work makes perfect sense ladies and gentlemen are you ready for the last and final topic uh topic number five are you guys ready jake are you ready gabe are you ready all right Shannon Cam Rich, the legend. You know, are you ready? You know I'm ready. Always ready. Sean, Sean, are you Sean ready? Sean's ready, by the way, guys. All right, let's go to topic number five. I hate you, Sean. <laughs> topic number five. Let's make a baby five. This will be good. All right, so Jake Paul fighting Nate Diaz at all. Uh, Gabe, wake up. Huh. <laughs> Gabe, <laughs> what the fuck? What's the topic? What are we Gabe, wake up! What I miss? What's going on? Hey, wake up! Where's number? Right. Five? Oh, that's number five. That's why I was asleep. Okay. God damn it, Jake! God damn it, Jake! All right, Jake. Your opinions of Jake Paul fighting Nate Diaz? What do you think? I look. Everybody knows I'm a fan of the Paul brothers. I think they're brilliant. I, I truly believe they train hard. You know, they put their money where their mouth is, and, and you know. I think they've done more for boxing than boxing's done in the last decade. You know, <laughs> boxing's a fucking disgrace. We never get to see good fights. So, you know, I, I I like the fight. I I don't know. I just I I, I just haven't heard any hype for this one. And and uh, you know, Jake kind of losing the last one. And I don't know. I mean, I, will I tune in? Absolutely, I will. But I, I'd still rather see Nate fighting in the UFC. All right, now that Gabe is awake, Gabe, what do you think? Um, I, you know what, Jake brought up a point that I, I haven't really thought about because I just I haven't seen it. I'm so surprised that they're not on some world tour together. You know, doing There's- every talk show and being in each other's face, and that they could build that up to be so good just by the personalities. And, and they're not no doing it at all. So I, in my opinion, that would probably be the funny, funnest part about the fight. More than the have, fight. Have you me. ever worked with the Diaz brothers? Good I, luck getting them to show up to anything. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is like. I maybe, agree. I agree with you. But but getting like I, I inter- Nate and and actually funny. My my my, uh, my buddy Simon uh, did a photo shoot with Nate. And I told him beforehand, good luck. And afterwards he goes, mate, you have no idea how difficult that was. At one point. <laughs> We we're all hanging out. Then all of a sudden they just dip out and they're on scooters. And I'm sitting there like, what the fuck at the hotel? And then they come back like two hours later. And he's like, it was a shit show in every possible way. Now, Nate and Nick do whatever the fuck they want. I kind of respect that. And uh, um, But I'm really, really surprised that even just like getting them, you know, to do talk shows and radio shows and or even just I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not really a, a TikTok guy. Or uh, mm-hmm. uh, even like, uh, but I haven't seen anything on on Instagram or TikTok or even those guys. Look, if if one guy was talking shit, the other one was going to respond. That's just how it goes. I haven't heard anything like that. And they're they're actually for it being the the, the marquee fight they've been trying to build for so long, and they've been talking about it forever. I haven't heard a shit about it. As a matter yeah. of fact, when you when when the topic came up, I'm like, oh, that's right, they are fighting. I didn't even remember like anything about the fight. Again, <laughs> well, like, I- genuinely. 
To, to, to your point, too, I, I com almost completely forgot the fight was happening as well. But, I mean, <laughs> you would think that with those personalities, it should be easy to build. You know, like, it's it, like look, going back to the Conor McGregor thing, Conor Nate was brilliant, and it wasn't intentional. At least on Nate's part, it wasn't intentional. It was just Nate being <laughs> Nate, right? Like, so, like, again, that buildup for that would have been great. But, uh, um, you know, I listen, I, I, I like Nate. I've known Nate since he was 16 years old. Um, I I want him uh, I, I want him to win. I, I, I but I also think that Jake Paul could potentially win that fight. And he took a bathroom break in, in, in the presser. How how amazing is that? And Santa Karen Rich, what, what what's your personal opinion of uh, and obviously we attended uh, Jay Paul versus Anderson Silva. I cry like a baby when Aaron S S Silva lost because I love him so much. But like, like uh, we, we were in VIP and Shan put us up. Like I felt like a celebrity because I was with the legend himself and a gentleman I look up to. But Shan the Cam Rich. Well, I'm a, I, I'm a Diaz brother fan. I don't care if it's Nick or Nate. I love watching those guys fight. They've, uh, you know, they've they've always been in it. Since really? the beginning, um, they both they they both put on hell of a fight. Um, I'm just over Jake Paul. I mean, there's really to me, there's just nothing nothing special about the guy. I, I I'm not interested at all to see him fight anymore. Um, we've we've watched him fight, and there's been a whole lot of talk that you know some of his stuff were, uh, you know, they weren't real fights. Maybe um, I don't know if it was or if it wasn't, but I, every single one of his fights has controversy and. Then he did lose this last time, and it was like really like uh, Jake Paul. And I'm just not interested at all. I'll watch the fight just because I want to see Nick Diaz fight or uh, Nate, but um, I'm not. I don't care about uh, the Pauls. Fair That's enough. Like the steam's out, you know. Yeah, pretty much. The steam's out, you know. We got three minutes before our next show, which obviously we have the legendary Corey Everson come down, but like obviously we're with. Shan the Ken Rich, and we want to talk to you, man. Last words, final thoughts from my brother, my friend, someone I look up to, someone I respect. Shan the Ken Rich, any final words, any final thoughts from the man, the myth, the legend himself, Shan the Ken Rich? Any final thoughts, sir? Yeah, just keep an eye out for me because I'm not done, guys. I'm out here and, uh, like I said, if I can get Frank Mir to sign this contract, Frank Mir and Shannon Rich is going to happen in Arizona. Um, I'm all game. I'm all in on that fight. Gabe, I promise I won't let you down. I'm going to fight in this one. Uh, you're going to have to rip my head off. So uh, Jake, Jake, will, Jake will probably be in my corner if, if he'll uh, help me with that. Um, yeah, we're going to we're gonna do it, man. So uh, I, I, you know, see, keep man. an eye That'd out for awesome. me in the movies. Got some big movies coming up. Uh, next summer, probably like four movies are getting ready to come out. Um, so far I've done 20 movies. Uh, Jake was, Jake was with me. Actually, I called Jake when I, when I did my first SAG film and, uh, we we're on the phone talking and Jake's like, Hey man, I know you're going to be an actor. And I was pretty excited about it. So, uh, this is, this has come full circle. I already done 20 films, SAG actor. And, uh, you know, things are, uh, things are looking up. Hell yeah. And, 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 and by the way, I couldn't respect you more, especially like the MMA awards and like, uh, especially with uh, the Jake Paul fight, like you look, always looked out for me and you always like put me up just like Jake Hatton. And I respect you more than anything. I love you, brother, and you're the man. And I, I appreciate you coming on the first show. I, and I possibly will be moving out to Vegas soon. I got something big cooking. Jake already knows what that is. Um, it's finally gonna happen. So, uh, I will definitely be putting you guys up in Vegas, uh, pretty soon. We got some big things coming up. Hell yeah. And Jake Thunder Hatton, the legend himself, my big brother, my manager, Jake Hatton, any final thoughts, any final words, sir? Man, I'm just excited to be back, talk to you guys about some fighting. I, I, I enjoy it so much. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And four time, four time, four time, put respect on my boy's <laughs> name, Gabe Rudiger, four time world champion. Gabe Rudiger Godzilla. Ball dot, sir. Wow. Uh, yeah, uh, not needed, but uh, good to be back. I'm, I'm uh, hoping this season is going to be a little more more different in, in a good way and positive way, and it's been awesome so far. Uh, hopefully everyone keeps tuning in and we keep building, and uh, it's always a good time talking with 
with everybody that comes on the show, but uh, obviously with uh, Jake and David, we're, we're consistently with, I always have a good time talking with you gentlemen. And so that alone makes it worth my time to, to get on here and uh, chop. Talk-